Um, hi, my name is John Baldwin, and I'm going to be talking about. Um, can you all hear me? All right. Okay, I'm going to be talking about uh, P trace on FreeBSD, in particular, um, some work I've been doing on GDB's native target support in well, FreeBSD that I've been working on since about January, and I had hoped to have merged into GDB before I gave this talk, but it's still in review. So, but I'll still talk about what I've been working on, kind of this current status and the rabbit hole of bugs. All right, so um, I'll start off by talking a little bit about just some basics of original P-Trace and kind of the process version of P-Trace that it was my understanding of how it was in BSD before we had threads and before FreeBSD extended it. Then I'm going to talk a bit about uh, a little brief overview of the extensions we made to ptrace and FreeBSD to support threads. Um, in particular, I'm not going to talk at all about um, the various alternative threading strategies FreeBSD explored for a while. I'm only going to talk about uh, using uh, one to one or one to one threading where each user land thread is backed by a kernel lightweight process. Uh, then I'm going to start talking about uh, some work I've been doing in GDB. I'm a mostly a uh, set of changes I've been working on that are improve support for handling debugging multiple concurrent processes, which I thought I had working and turned on, but it turns out I hadn't really made it work right. So I'll be talking about some of that and the experience of doing that. Um, and that's going to expose um, both problems I have kind of on the GDB side that I need to work on, but also some limitations that I need to probably, some things I think we need to change in Ptrace on FreeBSD to help make this work better. Uh, and then lastly, and that kind of ties into, so I'll, I guess I'll highlight the issues and then I'll talk about what things I think I might actually work on, which might be a subset of those or other things I've been working on that are related to the topic. Um, so first, just a general overview of how Ptrace works for processes. Or, uh, in the old days. Um, so in general, you have some kind of debugger process that wants to control or inspect another process. Uh, and you attach to that as a, from the debugger's perspective, you use PT attach with ptrace to attach to some other process. And then what the attach process does is anytime something happens that's interesting, uh, it's going to stop and the debugger then uses wait to find out what happened. And the only time really that the, the, a stop happens is either for a signal of some sort or for exit. Um, and then the debugger has a choice for what it might do with signals. It can uh, either pass along a signal that it receives or it can decide to discard it if it thinks it shouldn't send the signal to the child. And when it continues the child with PT continue. Um, and then, uh, an example, for example, uh, that's redundant. An example where we have a signal that we don't want to kind of pass through, because normally you would think a signal that happens, that's just an event, but you don't want to prevent the child from doing normal execution. You're just trying to see how the child behaves. But there are some signals that you don't want to pass through. And an example of that is um, when, a, when a child will raise SIG trap when it encounters a breakpoint. And a debugger, if it inserts a breakpoint, well, you've modified how the child should behave or how the, the debuggee should behave normally. And you don't want to pass along the resulting SIG trap that core dumps uh, the child process. So you want to intercept that, intercept that and discard it instead. And so there are other examples of signals uh, that are ones you don't want to pass along. Um, and in particular, other events that you, you that the kernel uh, or that the debugger might be interested in and that the kernel needs to inform the debugger that happened in a child, they're communicated by sending some, some kind of kind of special pseudo signal, you might think of it. Usually we use SIG trap for this, except in one case I can think of when we use SIG stop. Um, but that's kind of, because weight is built on, the only things that can matter are sending signals. Rather than in a, in a ground up strategy for debugging, you might imagine you might have some kind of way to directly deliver other types of events, but instead we piggyback on signals because weight already knew about signals. Uh, so an example of one of these other types of events that's kind of a synthetic signal that we'll send if a debugger is interested in the event are we have in FreeBSD, and I think we had, I think BSD in general might have had this um, system called entry and exit. Uh, events. So you can ask ptrace. Uh, an old way you could do this is you could use uh, a pt syscall instead of pt continue to resume a process, which turned on um, new events that were raised on every system call entry and exit in the form of a sig trap that the debugger could see and then again discard once it had figured out that's why the trap had happened. So 
Um, another example in this class of extra events that could happen that are done by signals and that was added in FreeBSD later as an, an extension for well, the, a thing that debuggers like GDB call fork following, which is um, a way that as a debugger, you want to be able to know about forks and you need some kernel help from this because uh, if a, a process that's being debugged forks, you don't want the child to start running and kind of have a race of when you can stop it and can find out what's happening. You want to be able to know from the beginning what the new child is doing. In particular, like for an example, the V fork, you don't want it kind of scribbling on the memory that's being shared with the parent and so forth outside of control. Um, and so in FreeBSD, we uh, support this via, and I'm not going to give a lot of detail on this one. Um, we have a, a command called PT or an op operation to ptrace called PT follow fork. And it does a couple of things. Uh, the first one is that when this is enabled, the kernel kind of auto attaches to new child processes created by a, by a fork and the process being debugged. So we will we send a fake sig stop in essence to the child process to stop it before it executes its first instruction so that via the mechanics of ptrace, uh, the debugger will see the new child process via wait and be able to have a chance to do anything it wants to before the child starts executing. Um, and that always happens and the debugger is responsible for deciding what it wants to do. Um, in addition, we also uh, raise a, a fake event that this one's a sig trap and the parent. So the debugger actually gets two events for a fork. Um, it gets an event in the parent saying, I forked and created a child. And um, then it gets an event in a child saying, I'm a new child. Um, and in particular, GDB is, is pretty careful that it kind of, whichever order it gets them in, it then waits for the other one to happen. And it doesn't actually tell GDB, like the upper layers of GDB, that a fork has happened until both events have been received and we're in a consistent state that we have control of the child and the, the parent is finished kind of returning from fork. Um, but I'm not going to actually go into details about this because maybe in this room, I talked about this like several years ago. So if you want to learn more about that, you can look at that talk that I gave earlier. So that was kind of the, the you know, brief talk about how ptrace works for processes in a very process centric world where the existing ptrace primitives made sense for processes. And then in FreeBSD 5, we added kernel threads. So we could have more than one thread per process. And we didn't do them as separate processes. There are separate things within a single PID. And, and ptrace is very PID based. Um, so we had to make some changes to ptrace to allow a debugger to deal with um, kernel threads and lightweight processes. And so uh, let's see. This was first added in FreeBSD 5. Um, so one of the changes that was made is that in a multi-threaded process, when any thread encounters an event in the kernel, we do a operation to synchronize all the other threads and force them all to kind of stop and pause in the kernel. So if they're in user land, we'll send them an IPI to make them wake up and re-enter the kernel and kind of get to a, a system call, like a user land return boundary. Or if a thread is in the, a, in the kernel for a system call, we'll wait for it to get to a point, either being asleep or getting back out to the, the end of the like return to user land. So all the threads have to stop anytime any one thread reports that encounters an issue that it wants to report to the debugger. Um, and then the way this is currently implemented is in struct proc, we have a single member called p underscore x thread that's a pointer to a thread. And when a debugging thread wants to report an event, it locks the, pro it locks the, the process and it checks to see if this member is null. If it is, it gets to set it and it's going to yay, it's won the race, it's going to be the thread that gets to report an event. And if it wasn't, the, if it, it's already not null, it just says, okay, well, I'll pause. And it'll get a chance in the future when it, when it gets resumed to try to go around the loop again and see if it can win the race to be the reporting thread. And this is how we keep track of which thread is the thread that's reporting an event anytime we wake up from wait. Um, then on the debugger side, after you get you wake up from wait and you want to find out which thread did something, you can invoke a uh, ptrace operation called pt underscore lwp info, and you give it the PID. And when this op this operation can take either some ptrace operations, including this one, can either take a PID to operate on the process or an lwp ID, and so you can get details about a specific lwp. Um, if you give it the PID in this case, it's going to look at the P underscore X thread member in the process to find out who my reporting thread is. And that's how you can find out which thread actually registered the stop that is currently the active stop or the active event. 
Um, we also added a, two new commands to allow you to kind of suspend and resume an individual thread. Um, and if a thread is marked suspended, then when you continue the entire process, so PT continue or PT step, they're kind of the, always using the entire process. Any threads that are suspended, they stay asleep. They don't actually resume execution. They just kind of, uh, when they're woken up for uh, PT continue, they actually just stay asleep on a wait channel. Until later, until later they're resumed, and if uh, later PT continue when they're resumed, that's when they'll actually start executing again. And then uh, an extension that I added that I mentioned in that previous talk in 11.0 is a way to get a set of events to allow a debugger to learn when threads um, are born and when they go away. And I talked about that more in the earlier talk, um, but the brief summary is uh, without this, a debugger would have to fetch the list of LWPs and kind of check their status every single time you had a stop to see if there were any new ones or, or ones that had gone away. So that adds a lot of ptrace calls to every single stop. Um, with this, you can kind of get an event when a thread starts up. It says, hey, I'm a new thread, but I'm here. And when a thread goes away, it posts a sig trap to kind of say I've gone away. And so you can just send, the GDB can rely on just getting events for that, and it never has to actually fetch the whole list of threads and scan it to know who's active and who's not. And then there's some quirks specifically around how PT continue works. Um, so every time you resume the process with PT continue or PT step or other, some like PT syscall is another one, um, that acknowledges or kind of releases one thread event. And it releases whatever thread was P underscore X thread. Um, and this can get very confusing if, for example, you're doing a PT step of some other thread, you don't get to acknowledge the, the event of the other thread, you're acknowledging the event of the thread that was currently reporting an event. So uh, let's say I have like thread A and thread B in our process, and um, thread A gets a signal that it was chosen to get sig user one or something, and thread B hits a breakpoint and gets a sig trap. I talk this out in my head. Um, if thread A, if for some reason, or yeah, for some reason, uh, let's say thread A hasn't even gotten a signal. Thread A is just running, thread B hits a breakpoint. And so we stop the whole process because um, you've decided to stop the process. Well, the, the breakpoint stops the whole process. The kernel stops it all. You, the debugger returns and says, hey, I hit a breakpoint in thread B. And you, the user, say, oh, that's cool, but I, that's okay, I hit a breakpoint, but now I actually want to see what the other thread was doing. So I'm going to like switch to the other thread in the debugger, and I'm going to turn on a mode which says I want to only step like the current thread I'm looking at, and so I'm going to step thread A to watch what it's doing. The first time you do that, we're going to say I want to step thread A in terms of ptrace to the kernel, but we're going to clear the event on thread B that reported the sig trap because that's the one that's currently kind of active, and that mostly works, but it's not always intuitive. Like that particular one, we kind of had a weird bug that I had to fix at one point in the kernel and work around the GDB because you could get it confused. Um, so then, if you, as I mentioned earlier, when you resume, if there are multiple threads that had an event, um, they're going to then try to set P underscore X thread and be their kind of reporting thread and try to have their signal be pending. Um, this means that you can't, if you get a, a stop on a, on a process and you get uh, wait, you can't really like scan all, you can scan all the threads if you want to see if multiple have, them, multiple have a pending event to try to coalesce maybe the work you could do. But if any of them have a pending signal, you can't discard it by doing a continue with no signal until they're actually the thread that has set this member because of the way PT continue works. So you can't kind of scan them all and batch up. You have to explicitly, like, this is a thread that had an event, handle that event. I have to continue the whole process. Some, they'll all wake up. The ones that still have an event will try to race to set PX thread and then, then stop everybody else again. And then that's the one you can handle next. And I'll get into more of why this could be confusing later or painful later in the talk. You can only pass along a signal to a thread while it's kind of this active p underscore x thread via pt continue or pt stop or pt step. In particular, if you suspend a thread, you, you pause it and say, I don't want you to run right now because I'm going to run some other thread. And that the one you're suspending had just received a signal. Because you're continuing the process to run some other thread, you've lost the opportunity to pass the signal along. 
to the original thread. It's now gone forever and kind of been discarded. Um, even if later you want to resume the thread you were pausing and at that point let it allow the signal that it had gotten earlier, well, that kind of opportunity was lost the way those things currently work. So that's some discussion about ptrace and maybe some hints about some of the problems that I've run into. Um, now I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the GDB side of things. So first, just what is kind of uh, in GDB, uh, the piece of code that the GDB has a notion of targets, which is how it will talk to something it wants to debug. For example, inspecting a core dump is a special kind of target, but inspecting a live process is a target. And then the live process ones are what GDB calls a native target. So this is just going to talk about the FreeBSD specific native target. So using ptrace on FreeBSD in effect. Um, so in the current release of GDB, GDB 13, it supports threads just fine, assuming that you do the one-to-one the -one model um, and supports port following. Um, it supports various other extensions like system call events. There's a, there's a thing called info proc that you can use to print out events about the process, kind of like proc stack can do. Growth. Um, so like an info proc files and an info proc mappings that returns like the VM mappings and so forth. Um, some things that recently added uh, are support for an asynchronous mode where GDB can kind of let the kind of use uh, non-blocking weights and rely on SIG child to decide what it needs to really do a weight. Um, and uh, also support for hardware watch points on AR64 was, I think that was new in GDB 13. And one of the things I changed many years ago is it has a little Boolean method that returns true to say, yes, I can support debugging more than one active process at a time, because that was kind of needed to turn on fork following. But the version in 13 is actually rather broken because I didn't really understand the contract, the API contract between the internal kind of what GDB calls the GDB core, that's kind of their um, target neutral event loop, and the what uh, you as a target are supposed to provide. I didn't fully understand an API, which to someone in my defense, it is somewhat obscure. So the first thing I looked at is this little GDB bug that I think has been open for five years. Um, and there's the link to it if you want to go read the sad story. Um, but the details of what happens in this particular bug uh, is that a new thread arrives and it starts executing and reports its birth to GDB when GDB is like not ready for it and thinks that shouldn't happen. So specifically, um, a new thread is created in a process by like calling pthread create, and that new thread doesn't yet start executing. It's on a run queue, but it's not been allocated time to run yet. Meanwhile, in some other thread in the same process, some kind of event like a breakpoint occurs, and so the whole process stops, right? And uh, now GDB is going to call wait to find out what happened. Um, like in particular, let's say a, a breakpoint, because that's really the most often case for this. Well, the way GDB copes with a breakpoint is okay, I've noticed a breakpoint, um, but now I, I need, when, when it's time to resume from a breakpoint, like, like you see that a breakpoint and you decide to step or continue the debugger, you need to actually do the instruction the breakpoint was covering, and you want to do that safely. So the way you do that is you take the breakpoint back out, you put the original instruction in place, and then you do a step. And then once the step is over, you're going to put the breakpoint back. And that's how you safely execute the one instruction. And then you can let everybody run once you put the breakpoint back. So when you're doing that, GDB really expects that when it does the step while the breakpoint is no longer active, that the only thing running is the one thread doing the step and nothing else. And Mark is already smiling. Um, so the way we do this is, is GDB, set, it sends a, GDB sends a request to the native target to say, okay, I want you to resume this one LWP and this LWP only with a step. Then we say in the native target, we say, okay, I will suspend all the LWPs I know about, which does not include the new thread that hasn't told us it exists yet. So we haven't gotten the event for it yet because it hasn't started executing. So we just suspend everybody else in the process. And we, then we do the, the PT step of the thread that wants the GB wants to run. And then that thread starts to run, wants to go out to use land to start to run the instruction. But meanwhile, the new thread says, oh, I finally get to report my event. And I immediately go around the loop and get to be PX thread and stop the process and report my event to saying, I'm born, I'm here. <laughs> 
And GDB says, why are you running? And throws an assertion error and dies. <laughs> so that's what happens in that bug. Um, so what are the kind of ways to fix that? Um, it's really a race between uh, w the part of GDB that wants to resume the thread to step because it trying to resume that say I want to, the GB says I want to run that one thread and the fact that we have this new thread that showed up and the thread trying to report its birth. And so one idea is we could fetch the list of existing threads and scan them all to check for any new threads every single time you're ever going to resume um, execution of a paused process in GDB. But that's many ptrace calls for every single resumption. That would be kind of expensive. At least two, but actually probably more than two for every resume. Um, the second fix, and the one that I've chosen to do, is when we get that request to resume a thread, we remember what GDB told us, that you said only run this thread. And if we get a vent for some other thread, we say, OK, oops. But we know it's a, a new thread's an oops, it's OK. And we'll kind of save that off in a list of pending events somewhere until later, resume the process to let it keep, we'll suspend the brand new thread so it doesn't do any damage. We'll resume the process so it can keep running and get the event we really care about um, and then report it. And well, actually that's my next slide, but I'll get there. Um, and this kind of solution, instead of doing extra P trace calls every time, we're only adding overhead when the race is lost. All right, so I was getting ahead of myself. So how does this work? Um, the resume callback uh, that, that GDB invokes anytime it wants to start running something again, um, it takes an, an argument, this type that GDB uses called a pted underscore t. Um, and it's a, a triple, that is like a, a, process ID, a process ID, an LWP ID, and a thread ID. And the last one you never need to worry about. That's if you're using like schedule activations, you might use that, but we don't care about that. For our purposes, it's a tuple, that is a process ID, um, and a thread ID. And there's some wild cards that it can pass to you. It can pass to you a, a tuple where the, the PID is a specific process and the, the LWP ID is negative one, meaning do everybody in this process. And it has a PID where a, a, uh, an ID, a tuple, where the PID is negative one, which means you can a wild card for everything that you're currently kind of attached to in our debugging. So I said all that. Um, so what the, the fix does is when we have this resume method called and we get this particular tuple value, we stash it in a global so that later in wait when we get a, an event, we can decide that the event we're getting is one that we can actually pass to GDB or one we need to save off on the side. Um, and then, because I got ahead of myself in the last slide, if we get an event and it's not for the last kind of tuple we got from our resume callback, then we stash it off in a linked list of pending events and kind of and make that thread be suspended manually and continue the whole process until we get an event that GDB is actually waiting for. So I, I did this. And then um, in particular, because I'd added this new global variable, and I'm paranoid, added an assertion to make sure that I never tried to set the global variable more than once before I would got to do a wait and reset it back to the it's not being used state. And therein, I started to enter the rabbit hole. So uh, I added these various assertions to document my assumptions. Um, and so I ran GDB's test suite, and uh, I got new assertion failures to confirm that my assumptions were incomplete. Um, so my first false assumption, it's the first, it's a keyword. Um, my first false assumption I just hinted at, which is um, that I had assumed for whatever reason, that the resume callback would be invoked on kind of one time, either with like a single process or the wild card for all processes, before it would try to do a wait to wait for something to happen. Um, by doing the assertion where I, that this global variable that was caching the value of the tuple would never be written to multiple times. And that was wrong. The actual truth is that GDB is free to call that resume callback multiple times to kind of, instead of resuming everything, like if you have four processes you're actively attached to, it might choose to resume two of them, or it might choose to resume like thread A in one process and all the threads in process B. So I could no longer have a global variable to do this. So then I kind of worked on my next kind of 
patch to kind of make this work and handle multiple processes more correctly. Um, and as I, as I was writing this, I thought about it that I, I don't understand what model I had in my head that made me think I didn't have to allow for multiple things to be resumed, but whatever it was, it was wrong. Um, so the real model is, as I just mentioned, I can get multiple of these callbacks. Uh, so, and one thing I, I had noticed but hadn't really handled uh, is if I get the wild card, I actually need to explicitly walk all the active processes and resume all of them, which I was not doing before. And the NetBSD target does some of this, but doesn't do some of it correctly and doesn't do the other half and wait. I'll say that. Um, but I learned something from looking at the NetBSD target. Um, but another thing that I also completely didn't do, and this one is not the part that NetBSD doesn't quite do currently, is when a process stops to report an event, the native target is responsible for finding any other processes that we're currently attached to that are running and stopping them explicitly as well. But GDB kind of expects everything to be stopped when a stop happens, not to have some of the processes running and some of them stopped. Uh, and GDB calls this kind of all stop mode. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that's kind of how it expects by default ptrace type targets on Unix systems to work. So what are some of the things I had to fix? Um, instead of having a global copy of this kind of tuple that passed to resume, I had to allocate a data structure for every active running process, um, what GDB calls an inferior. And I had to store a copy of which, uh, what was my, my resume tuple for a given process in that data structure. It was kind of indexed by the process. And if resume is invoked with a wildcard, I have to walk all, the, and there's an easy way to ask for it. I have to kind of ask GDB for all my active inferiors that are currently attached to me as a native target and go through and resume all of them to kind of PT continue all of them so they all start running. And then along with this, um, because I'm going to need this for wait, I added a new little helper function to stop any given process. Um, and what, it, what this little helper function does is we do a wait with no hang, just on the off chance that maybe the process has already stopped because it like some thread and it hit a breakpoint, for example, or something like that. And in which case life is great. We don't have to really mess with the process much. And if that doesn't work, then we have to send sig stop to it. And then we have to wait because we need the process to stop. So we'll send sig stop to make sure there's at least an event in flight that's going to make this process stop one way or another. And then we do a blocking wait to wait for the process to report a stop. But it might have reported some other event that's not the sig stop. Like let's say it actually is about to hit a breakpoint in some thread in the process when we send sig stop. Mark is already doing this. Um, that you might get the sig trap from the breakpoint kind of before you get the sig stop that you sent. So then I also have to remember if I have a pending sig stop in flight that in the future I'm going to need to explicitly discard and throw away because it's from the debugger and not for reals. So when I'm waiting for an event, the first thing I have to do now in, in GDB's wait callback is first I have, and I kind of had this pre-existing, but it, it gets, it's more relevant now. I have this like uh, FIFO queue of pending events that I've seen before that I couldn't report because GDB didn't want to know about them at the time they occurred. So first I have to, uh, to look at that and say, are any of these events now eligible to be reported? Because GDB tells me in wait, that a tuple of the things it cares about that it wants to know. And so I might have an event that I can't report because the tuple to wait says it's not eligible. Or for the process that the, the reporting thread belongs to, if the set of currently resumed threads for that process doesn't include the thread that had this event, I still need to kind of keep it as deferred. So I have to wait. So I have to walk this list of pending events to see if any of them match the criteria of weights tuple filter or the active kind of tuple filter for the current or for that process to see if it's eligible. If I find one, yeah, yeah, I can return that. Life is all happy. Um, well, I can return that one after a little more work, but I can return that one. Um, but if I don't find any of those, then I actually call the real thing that does wait, which it turns out is actually a loop around wait because inside of that, I can have events I need to discard. But anyway, I get to call wait in a loop till I have something that really happens. But then when I get an event from wait, I have to check to see is an event that I actually can deliver um, using the same filter rules about is, does it match weights kind of filter of what it's allowed to report and for the process that the thread belongs to, is it allowed to report this event or not and decide do I queue it in my linked list and resume the process 
or I finally got something I can report. And then finally, once I have gotten some kind of event, either from my pending list or because I called wait and I got something out of wait that is valid, then I have to go walk all of my list of active processes to see any of them that are still running. I need to stop them using the new little helper routine I added earlier, either because maybe they already happened to stop or I got to send them a SIG stop and make sure everything is calm and quiet. And then finally, at that point, I can return an event to GDB that will be something it wants to see and not assert over. And then add a lot of assertions to cover all this crap. You can see a pattern. Farther down the hole. Um, more assumptions, more, more test failures with assumptions. I even had a nice little, at one point I had a nice pipeline I saved in my history, which would kind of do a grep of, with my, I grepped all the test names and then like internal error, which gets is the thing that gets printed for an assertion and then piped it through like uh, grep minus two, the grep for internal error again with some sorting and count. So I got a nice summary of all the counts of assertion failures with a count in front of them, but in the test in which they asserted because that was handy, because it happened. Um, the, the next assertion I ran into that was problematic, um, or the next kind of issue I ran into uh, was there were two other things in my target layer that I implemented um, that I assumed GDB would always stop the process for me one way or another before it was called, and it doesn't. So actually, it would have to have a way to do that. And it was just a false assumption. But in particular, when GDB wants to detach from a process because you typed detach in, or if GDB wants to kill a process with kill, it may be that the process is actually still running. Um, you can actually do this there. Are, I don't use them typically, but I guess some like graphical frontends can use it. There are commands in GDB where you can do like a continue with an ampersand, where it continues the process and let it runs, but it doesn't block waiting for an event. It gives you a prompt back and you can do whatever you want to kind of do other commands to it. And so in things like, and some of the tests will do things like this, and that's how they tripped over and found these problems where we wanted to detach from something or kill it, but it was still running and like ptrace failed or something like that. Um, but there's a couple of extra wrinkles to fix for these cases besides just stopping the process. So I do need to stop the process before I detach it but then I have to do some cleanup. So in particular, if you remember, I talked about fork following a while ago and that what the kernel does is if you have fork following turned on and you forked, we always like mark the child process as attached to the, to the debugger like as part of the fork happening. And that happens instantly at the time of fork. Well, if I'm about to detach or kill, there might be fork events um, and a thread hasn't won the race yet to call to set itself as PX thread and report the fork event so that I as the debugger know about it and know about the new child process that I'm actually attached to from the kernel's perspective, but maybe I as the debugger don't know about it yet. So one of the things I need to make sure I do in detach and kill is find any processes that I might be attached to because they were a child of a fork and make sure I've detached from them successfully so they're all free to run as part of detaching from the parent. And that there's a couple of places internally in GDB where those exist, but that's an easy fix to kind of walk some list and find events that are pending kind of higher up in GDB and, and detach from those child, those children. But there's also some weird edge, or at least I handle them, edge cases that it might be a thread that uh, hasn't got a chance to set P underscore X thread yet. Maybe that one can't happen because of the single threading we do around fork, but I handled it just in case. Um, but then there's another fun one which is if you have active breakpoints in a process when you're going to detach from it, and if you just blindly detach, uh, well, you, A, you need to pull the breakpoints out so the threads don't keep running and trip over them and sig trap and don't core dump and die. That's the first step. And GDB doesn't do this by default because targets seem to kind of do some song and dance. So by default, GDB says, if you don't handle this near detached target, you just leave breakpoints as landmines for your process to trip over after you've detached. So I had to fix that and actually stop the process and take the breakpoints out. But that leaves a new issue, which is, let's suppose we've, uh, we've, we're, we're stopping a process because they're getting ready to detach. And we have some threads in that process that have hit a breakpoint, but haven't been able to win the race to set P underscore X thread and tell you they won the breakpoint. Well, on X86 in particular, when you hit a breakpoint, you advance your instruction pointer over the breakpoint byte to point to the next instruction. 
But because x86 has variable length instruction words, you might be pointing to the middle of an instruction. But, and regardless, you're not pointing to the instruction you really need to execute, which is the real instruction that exists when the breakpoint is, re is removed. So I need to walk and find any threads that have a kind of pending breakpoint event and flight and fix their program counter before I actually detach so they'll run the right thing. And I, so I need to clear them. But remember this thing that I mentioned earlier about PT continuing threads? I can only clear the pending signal. So there's two parts. There's the fact I need to make sure you run the right instruction, but there's also the fact that you have a SIG trap pending. That by default, if you get delivered, you're going to die with a quorum because you got a SIG trap instead of default action for SIG trap. So I need to find the threads that are running. I need to fix up their PC to move it back by one on x86 or whatever's appropriate for their architecture. But I also need to make sure I discard the SIG trap so the SIG trap doesn't go to the process and kill the process. So the only way I can discard the SIG trap is I have to let the process run until the thread wins the race to be P underscore X thread and be the reporting of this so I can PT continue or PT detach and your, and your SIG trap gets thrown away. So when I'm, when I'm getting ready to detach or kill, I keep having to do this loop where, uh, and also if I had stopped you and I'd sent you a SIG stop, and the SIG stop is still pending. I've got to wait for that to show up so that I can make sure that I can get discarded safely and not get delivered to you after you're detached. So what I have to do in detach in particular is I have to do in a loop where I keep waiting and scanning. Is there anything I have to wait to magically get to the head of the queue as the pending event that I care about? And, I have to, and as long as that's true, I've got to continue the process and wait for what happens and see if handle that one and see if I got any more. And of course, you can imagine uh, if you can keep getting more events, get more fork events or whatever. So you have to you have potentially a loop that could run forever, waiting to get to a quiet enough state where I can detach with no bad side effects. And that's about that long. Uses the lambda and everything. <laughs> okay. I think I talked that to death. All right. So this is good. I got ahead of myself a little bit. So I have to drain these events. Um, and I can only discard when I get to the head of that queue for PX thread. So I can't use a nice or order one, look at the process, clean up all the mess, detach, and you're done. I have to use this annoying real loop and loop until it's all quiet. And that was a lot of painful code to write. And then in the press part of this, I found a bug, not in GDB, but in the kernel, and which is my bug. To, to be clear, it's my fault. Um, but I found a bug in the LWP events I added back in FreeBSD 11. Um, for, for reasons, I kind of understood why I did what I did. And I, I think I maybe said the review why I did what I did, maybe. Um, the way that we keep track of if we have these thread events to report, in particular for born and exit, um, is we set some flags in a field and struct thread to say, what is my kind of pinning list of events that I have? And then during detach, we clear some, but not all of these flags. And actually, I think there's one of them we have to, we can't just set the zero, because if we resume you and we want to, if you want to detach and, and pass along the signal you just reported, we can't set it to zero. So we can't actually set them to zero for all of them. So we, we only clear some of them. And when I added this new event to say you're born, I didn't, during detach, clear that flag to say you should no longer report yourself when you start executing. So there's a little race that um, if you've created, if you've, piece, you've uh, as the child, one being debugged, you've created a new thread via pthread create on the run queue, has not run yet. And then the debugger, and we get a stop for some other reason, and the debugger says, okay, I'm going to detach. Um, and the debugger thinks it's all fine to detach because, you know, no active breakpoints or forks or anything. It detaches, that's all fine, that's great. Um, and it disables ptrace. And says, okay, and lets everything start running again. The thread wakes up, it goes into the kernel and like fork return or fork whatever it is. And it says, oh, I have this born of it, I should report. So I'm going to send myself a SIG trap so the debugger can get it. And then boom, it just dies. Because it's a real SIG trap now, not a, not a SIG trap that goes to the debugger. So um, I'm just like tweaking the fix a little bit. It's in review. If I didn't have a conference this week with a dev summit, I would have committed it by now, but it's not yet fixed. Um, and then it turns out there is a way I can detect this case. There's a, I can see in the PTLWP info um, that I'm in this unique case that it only has the born flag and not the flag that says I've also kind of hit a signal yet because of reasons. 
Um, so in my Lambda function, in my earlier loop for detach, when I'm checking for all the candidate of things I need to let bubble up to the front, um, I'm going to put a FreeBSD version guard around it. But that's one of my conditions besides have you hit a breakpoint, have you forked, is um, do you are you in this weird state where you've been born but not reported yet, I'm trying to detach and I can't let that happen. And so that's one of the events that I will let drain um, to make sure it gets to the head of the queue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at this point, after having to work around for that bug and the kernel fix, I'm down with all my new assertions to one assertion failure, new assertion failure, um, or one actually one assertion failure that, that's not like a test of the assertion function, because GBS test suite has that, um, and the entire run of all its test suite. But it's a doozy. So what I found is that in one test, GDB is not resuming two different processes by calling resume two times. It has a process with like, I don't know, 40 threads or something. And it decides I want to resume two of the threads in this process and not all of them. So it is not only calling the resume callback once per process. Um, and I think part of this, well, it just, it just doesn't. So it decides that for whatever reason that it has a, a reason, and you can do this actually with using things like continue um, and something that calls Skedlock, where you can say if I want to do a step, step only a thread, and you can also step in the background with the ampersand too. You can and you can effectively do this in the on the in the CLI yourself if you really want to, which is what the test was doing. Uh, but the result was, um, well, yeah, I'll get the implication. The result is I can get this resume called back called twice with the same process but different LWP IDs, which means. I no longer have exactly one tuple variable per process. I need to kind of cache in my structure, but it's worse. The worst part is that the way the resume callback I had been doing would work was this, based on this assumption that I only got one call. I can look at it and say, okay, I know exactly what I need to do for this process. I either need to resume everything or I need to, just to like suspend everybody but one and run the one thing. And now I can't do that anymore. Instead, and, and, and what's painful is, let's say I only get to find out about this in pieces. So I found out that I need to run thread A. Okay, if I did my current logic where I suspended everybody and then like PT continued, well, then when I got the thing to say I need to run thread B, uh, I'd have to like stop the process manually and like resume thread B. Like I can't resume it while it's already running. So instead, what I have to do is I have to like memorize and coalesce all these resume callbacks until wait gets called and only then apply the result of all these resume requests. So now I've expanded my data structure that instead of just getting to store a copy of the tuple, I now have a unordered set, like a standard unordered set, at least I need to use C++ containers in this thing, um, not do all this crap in C. Um, I have an, a set of kind of threads that have been resumed as well as a special kind of Boolean to say, is the whole process resumed? The Boolean matters because when I get a new thread, this is how I found out if the new thread, it's okay for it to report its event. Because if the whole process is resumed, the new thread that GDB doesn't know about yet, it's okay for that one to show up. Um, versus if GDB, if I had four threads and GDB explicitly said all four threads could run, the new thread still needs to be deferred and not report its event. So every time I get a call to this resume callback now on my target, um, instead of doing anything like ptrace wise, I kind of update this data structure that stores my kind of pending resume state per process. I will you know, add a thread to this kind of list, or if it's for the whole process, I'll kind of set some things differently. I have various assertions to make sure that GDB doesn't like resume the whole process and then a thread and it is, it does not do that. That at least is the same. Um, and then when GDB finally says, okay, now I'm ready to wait for something it calls wait before I do anything else, now I have to walk to the list of my processes to say, do any of you have kind of pending resume information? And if so, I'm gonna figure out what GDB has asked me to do in the interim and like use PT or suspend or resume for the set of, if I have, if everybody's resumed, I've got to resume anybody that might've been suspended before and continue the process. Otherwise I have to walk through my unordered set or my list of all my, my threads for my process and check if you're on the unordered set or not to decide if I suspend or resume or not. And then I get to PT continue. I know, by the way, I have to handle stepping, um, but the way I handle that now is I just always use PT set step and always use PT continue, and that makes life so much better. 
And this, uh, I think I get to it, that this, that last change that I'm currently still working on, it mostly seems to work, um, uh, but I'm still, I'm still finding tuning that one. But, uh, but there's still many bugs that I've got to work through in GDB's test suite. Um, but I have encountered some limitations in FreeBSD's ptrace handling, in particular dealing with threads. It's kind of some of these pain points that I've had. Um, so another one that I haven't mentioned at all is that GDB thinks, and I guess because Linux lets you do this, that at any point in time, it should be able to read from a debug process's memory, even while it's running, which we, our ptrace doesn't think that's a thing you should be able to do. Um, I think it even thinks it wants to write, which is kind of crazy. Um, I mean, but at least reading it's racy, but it understands it's racing. That, that one probably is not too hard to enable. And if it's racy, oh, well, you don't care if you get stale data. I haven't really thought about if we want to try to handle writing. I'm hoping to do reading and see if, that, if, if it actually anything still fails after that. Um, I also really would like a way that when I have a deferred signal for a thread, I can have the kernel consider it deferred until I'm actually going to run that thread for real by like having it be PT resumed and then doing a PT continue. I need to have some way that, 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 that when I, if it's at the front of the queue and P underscore X thread and I do some kind of PT continue, if it happens to be suspended at that point, because I'm really trying to run some other thread, I need its pending signal to not get thrown away at that point in time. I need a way to hit the kernel, just leave it there. I'll tell you later if I want you to do, throw it away or not. Uh, I would really like a way, and I think I've already hinted at this four times or two or three times, really like a way that when a process stops, I can just kind of pull off all the events without having to do a PT continue dance and just pull them all off, handle all the things. Like, for example, detached, that would make my life much better. Um, another one that I ran into, and this is kind of my fault or my ignorance. Um, GDB really, and it's not just GDB. I'll explain it first in generic terms and then come back to how it confuses GDB a little bit. Um, right now, the create events that uh, the kernel posts for a new thread is, are not like fork. It's only one half of what fork does. So it means you can get, let me see if I put this up. Yeah, so fork reports events for both a child and a parent. Um, and Linux threads, because they're kind of sort of Linux threads are sort of like processes, kind of in some ways, especially ptrace-like. Um, Linux threads do the same. So they get an event for both halves. Because we do not, the, yeah, the, the current approach that FreeBSD uses means that from a debugger's perspective, you can kind of get into this weird state where you have an empty process with no threads. So I'll describe the, I think it's on the slide, but I'll describe it. Suppose you have a thread with a process, like just your main, and it calls pthread create and then exit right away. Um, and the, the, the new thread that you've created, your thread B, it's on the run queue, but it's going to take a while to, to run for whatever reason, but the exit posts. So from the debugger's perspective, what it might get is, I you know, attached, we've got a single thread, the thread exited, but not the process. <laughs> and then later I get an event saying, oh, there's another thread. So right now I actually have an explicit hack. Um, normally I swallow thread exit events. I can just kind of tell GDB that the, with an API call, the thread went away, but I'm going to have to kind of report an event to the core. Um, but I have a special hack now in the, in the kind of weight handling that if I get an exit event and it's really, it's actually the last, the last thread has exited to not wait forever in a, in a deadlock, I actually need to report kind of a spurious, something happened, you should kind of examine your state and try me again up to the core to kind of get unstuck so that it'll wait for the new thread to show up. It's kind of messy. So after all that ranting, what is the, where am I on time to? I'm over? Oh Lord, okay. Well, I have more slides that I'll put up after we're done because I have lots more stuff to say about what things are in flight and what things I would like to work on, which is fixing many of the things I talked about. I think I'll stop. If you want to talk to me more, you can find me in the hall. Thanks.